in a little while just to kind of review where we were because we didn't quite get to a good stopping point last time. We've been focused on a new class in Java, the scanner class. And the scanner class um, reads a sequence of characters from a stream. In our case, the stream is the user typing on the keyboard in the terminal. Um, and it takes that sequence of characters, breaks them into tokens, basically words, um, and then we can call different methods to get different things from our, our scanner. Um, we also focused on some best practices here in terms of um, how to prompt the user for information so they know what we want them to type, how to use print instead of print lens so the prompt is all on a single line, how to add a little space here so things don't get too crowded. The first method we learned, and we did all of this in our Caesar Cipher example. So we're basically prompting the user, hey, what is the text that you want to encrypt? They're going to type in like an entire sentence or multiple sentences. We don't want to read that one word at a time. We want to get everything the user types until they hit that enter key in a single string. And that's what the next line method will do for us. Okay? We get all the characters up until where they hit enter um, as a single string. And so that's the text that we're going to encrypt. We then asked the user just for the key phrase. And the key phrase was a single word. Okay, So no spaces here. We just want one word. Um, this key phrase is used to perform the encryption using the Caesar cipher. And so since we just wanted one word, we didn't use next line. We used the next method which returns simply the next token in the stream, just that next word. And we store that in the variable key phrase. And so where we're going to go from here um, is to explore the next method um, that we want for our Caesar cipher here. Um, so let's next... <coughs> Give me one second here. We next want to prompt the user for, so we're going to do more. Of course, we're going to encrypt the text. We're also going to do a calculation and create a description of if you're trying to, like, by hand craft the Caesar cipher, like, you're going to just guess a key phrase, and then you're going to go through the algorithm and see if um, it actually worked or not. How long does it take you to do that for each guest key phrase? And then we can tell the user, hey, it's going to take you this long to actually craft the cipher on average. So we need to ask them, how many seconds does it take to crack it? So here's our prompt. So we're going to do another system.out.print. And we're going to say, enter the number of seconds to test a guess key phrase. So print instead of println, very descriptive prompt, little space here with this so things aren't crowded. So maybe it takes two seconds, oh, five seconds, for them to see if the guess key phrase is correct. Here's the really nice thing about the scanner object, the scanner class. Um, if we expect the user to type in an integer value, we don't have to read that as a string and then take a second step of converting it to an integer. The scanner class can do that for us. So this might be like the only thing in Java that is more straightforward than Python. Um, so here's, how we, here's the method we're going to use. So we'll add a little description of it. The method we use to read an integer is called nicely the next int method. So the next int method attempts to convert the next token in the stream to an int. And it returns the value. Perfect. Does it all in one step for us. So if the user types in one, two, three, it's going to return that as 123, exactly what we want. 
What if the user types in cat instead? Well, we can't convert cat to an integer value. Um, so if the next token cannot be converted, an exception is generated. So we get one of those exceptions like we saw for like dividing by zero. We're in our sample code here that we're, we're live coding together. We're only going to call next int, but just for completeness, there is a next blank method for every primitive type. So the next double method behaves in the same way for doubles. And there's a next Boolean method, you know, whatever we need. But we're just going to stick with next int for today. So this is the way it works. We create a local variable of type int. I'm going to call it seconds per guess. And I'm going to assign it the value return by calling the next int method on our scanner variable s. That's it. That's all it takes. Not too bad. So we've seen how to read in a whole bunch of characters all the way up to where the user hit enters with ne next line. We've seen how to read a single word, single token with next to read it as a string, and how to read a single integer value with next int, um, and there's other ones for other primitives as well. This is basically the basic functionality we need from Scanner to be able to do pretty much anything we want. So we're in, we're in good shape now. Um, this is our Caesar Cipher demo class. What we want this to do is eventually we want to run this main method and it will prompt us for the message to encrypt, the key phrase, the number of seconds, and then it's going to print out, hey, here's the complexity of the encryption, how long it would take on average to crack, um, and here's your encrypted text. So we're going to add a few more lines here at the end to actually use the Caesar Cipher, make a new Caesar Cipher object and actually call methods on it. It's not going to compile yet because we need to go actually write those methods. But since we're in this file, let's finish it up here with a few more lines. Um, so let's actually make a new Caesar Cipher object. So I'm going to have a local variable of type Caesar Cipher. I'll call it Cipher. And I'll assign it the reference return by saying new Caesar Cipher. We haven't written the constructor yet, but we will. And when we do write the constructor, we're going to have the constructor take a single parameter, which is the key phrase. So there's a single key phrase for a Caesar Cipher object. And we can do a whole bunch of encryption with the same key phrase, but there's one key phrase for the object. So we'll pass our key phrase variable as the argument to the constructor. And again, we're going to have compile errors till we actually go implement the rest of the Caesar Cipher class. Um, we want to print out the complexity of this encryption based on how many seconds it takes to, to verify a guess. So let's create a local variable of type string called complexity, D-E-S-C, short for description. And we'll call the get complexity description method. And we'll pass one argument, which is the seconds per guess. Basically, this method, which we'll write, start writing in a moment, if we say it takes five seconds per guess, it's going to basically do a calculation and say, oh, on average, it's going to take you 300,000 seconds to crack the cipher. But that's not really useful because I don't know what 300,000 seconds is. I can't connect that to something more concrete. So it'll, it will also tell me like, well, how many hours is that or days is that or things like that. And let's print this out. So we'll do system.out.println. We'll say complexity and concatenate the string returned by calling the method. And then finally, we want to actually do the encryption. That's important. So let's create a local variable called encrypted text. It 
It takes one argument, which is the string of the text to actually encrypt. It encrypts it and it returns a reference to a new string, which we're storing in encrypted text. And we'll print that out as well. Cool. So this isn't going to compile until we write these missing methods. But this Caesar Cipher demo class is good to go. Um, and it's a good example for us to reference in terms of scanner.